Hello, I'm Paolo Caramelli. I'm professor of neurology at the Faculty of Medicine in the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And uh, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, talk to you on recommendations to distinguish behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia from primary psychiatric disorders. The diagnosis of behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia relies on clinical and neuroimaging assessments in most cases, showing limited accuracy in the early stages. The Neuropsychiatric International Consortium for Frontotemporal Dementia reviewed the existing literature on the diagnosis of FTD behavior variant and its differentiation with primary psychiatric disorders in order to create a list of clinical recommendations for the assessment of these patients um, in the clinic. These uh, recommendations are divided into the different uh, topics related to the clinical assessment and to ancillary tests. And the first one are the clinical scales. And uh, these uh, recommendations are divided into minimal requirements, clinical recommendation, and uh, in, in, in some instances, some specific assessments. So in terms of clinical scales, uh, the group agreed that um, it's important to use the consensus diagnostic criteria of behavioral variant FTD uh, via high history, clinical history, and clinical observation. Um, it, it's also important to use, or we recommended the use of systematic use of behavioral clinical scales, such as the frontal behavior inventory, for example, or the stereotypy rating inventory. In terms of psychiatric assessment, so this is the minimum, these are the minimal requirements. Uh, what is important though is that um, these patients should ideally be evaluated by a multidisciplinary team with expertise and experience in the diagnosis of neurocognitive disorders as well as psychiatric uh, disorders. In terms of a neurological examination, it's very important uh, to perform a formal uh, a physical neurological examination in all these patients. In particular, it's important to test for Parkinsonism or Parkinsonism features, to test or to investigate the possible existence of motor neuron size and uh, uh, primitive reflexes, such as the grasp reflex, and to test um, ocular uh, movements. In terms of cognitive testing, uh, as you can see in this uh, table, uh, there are many uh, clinical or many uh, neuropsychological tests that can be used either as bedside uh, tools uh, on, to neuropsychological examination or to social cognition. And just, I just want to highlight that there are some uh, bedside cognitive tests, just, such as the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, the MOCA, the Adenbrook's Cognitive Examination, the A's, uh, that can be used by the clinician uh, to uh, assess uh, uh, global cognition and to explore some specific cognitive domains. In terms of uh, structural and nuclear uh, neuroimaging, uh, brain uh, MRI is the ideal structural uh, neuroimaging um, method to be used, uh, and brain CT only if MRI is not available or is uh, contraindicated. FDG-PET is a very useful um, uh, tool in situation where there is ambiguous diagnostic uh, or in situations where MRI or CT do not show clear frontotemporal atrophy. In terms of cerebrospinal fluid and blood biomarkers, uh, of course, uh, these can be used especially to rule out Alzheimer's disease, as there are no uh, specific biomarkers available so far for the diagnosis of behavioral, behavioral variant FTD. And finally, in terms of uh, genetic testing, um, it's important to explore uh, family history of similar cases of dementia and uh, genetic testing uh, can be offered 
to uh, individuals who have a clear uh, family history. And here in this uh, table, you see the specific, some of the specific situations or mutations that can be identified. Thank you. Thank you.